world's elite players at the peak of their powers, thoughts of retirement aren't often on the horizon. But even for these superstars, there comes a time when they must consider life after rugby. One club paying particular attention to this key aspect of player welfare is Canterbury in New Zealand. I think it's, it's really quite crucial in that we know that uh, a rugby career is a you know, is a, a finite period and that there is going to be life after rugby. So it's really managing that end point and that transition. The Players Association did a survey here in New Zealand uh, 2012 that involved 123 former players. A lot of those had obviously played super rugby, number of All Blacks, but 48% of those weren't in control of their retirement. So whether it was through loss of form or injury, what happens when a player's professional career draws to a close can present problems, no matter what you're standing in the game. I used to get a little bit frustrated where people say you've got to say what you're going to do or have something to be sorted for when you're done, whereas that could be in two years, five years, ten years, you know, so to actually sit there, it's quite a daunting thing. But what I, I the biggest thing I see, and, and this is where the development um, uh, program has, has been great, is actually you actually open up some options so that you know when that time comes for whatever reason, whether you know, unfortunately the odd injury or whatever, um, that you've got the right people to talk to or you've done some things that actually open a door for you. There's that balance you've got that you're not going to be doing this forever. Um, you, you definitely want to make hay while the sun shines and, and, and play well and, and in as much man as you can but um, you know you can't be doing this forever and there's, there's a long time post rugby that you've got to have a career so um, I think uh, having these guys in, in their roles that they do here in New Zealand is great. Some of our young players that are coming in now have really focused on rugby as a career. We're noticing that's a, a little bit of a change and they don't really see that that end point is, is not, not really on the radar for them. So with those guys, uh, it might be just some exploration around career education, around what are their interests, exposure to maybe what's out there in the, in the market. I think it's a bit of an excuse to say, well, I'm leaving the study or the, the schoolwork aside to focus on rugby. I think you can do both. And I think the people that are able to do both, to manage time, to, uh, to, to, to get that balance right, end up being a better rugby player in the long run and uh, and you see the guys that come in here, the guys that have done nothing else and they, they, they sometimes burn out or they don't know how to persevere with stuff because they haven't had to manage a whole bunch of stuff and, and I think the, the people that have, have got strong character and, and the people you really rely on on a rugby field are the ones that have, actually have, uh, have those sort of uh, skills and attributes which you know, um, making sure you get that side of your life, the study side or the schoolwork side done uh, properly is, is actually a, a big positive. The programme helps players gain work experience, establish their own businesses or to even continue their education. It's easy to get locked into uh, rugby, rugby, rugby and you know it's, it's an important part of your life and you put a lot of energy into it but um, it's just made, like, it's opened my eyes to realise that uh, getting your life some sort of balance and an understanding of the big picture of where rugby sits um, has been valuable for me. Giving guys experiences that they're able to see they actually do have things to offer when they perhaps were wondering, gee, what, what do I do? I think it's almost just making them aware of, of the skills that they, they have generated within the rugby environment. He's really pressed me at trying to finish my degree. I'm doing a sports coaching degree and uh, in the last couple of years I've gone back to it and. Um, you know, he's always just, you know, triggering little things that maybe you should think about, um, whether it be first aid courses or, you know, continuing to study, getting some work experience. Um, for me at my age, I'm not going to be doing this forever, um, so it's great to have him, you know, just chipping away at you, making sure that you're thinking about life after, after footy.